Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve top K frequent elements. I really like this problem because it's pretty clever and once you figure it out, the code is really easy to write. So we're given an input array nums and an integer K and we want to return the K most frequent elements that appear in the array nums. We can return the answer in any order. So for example, we have this input array, three ones, two twos and a single three and we want to return the two most frequent elements right so we know that the most frequent is of course one it appears three times so we add a one to the output the second most frequent is two so then we add a two to the output and that's all we want now if if k was three of course we'd add the last element k is never going to be greater than the distinct number of elements in the input array so that's good for us and our input array is always going to be non-empty so for example, for each value, right, we're gonna ca count how many occurrences it has. So for example, one occurs three times, two occurs twice, and three occurs once. And then we can take this, basically this list of pairs, right? Then we can sort it in ascending order, right? So basically it's already sorted in ascending order, right? Because the most frequent is here, the second most frequent is here, the third most frequent is here, right? Now, of course, sorting it in the worst case, right? Basically, if every single value in here was distinct and we wanted the top K distinct values, we'd get a time complexity of N log N, right? But we don't necessarily need to sort the entire thing because we only want the top K frequent elements. So in another solution, we could actually use a max heap. So we would still do this whole operation where we count the number of occurrences of each value and then we'd add each pair to our max heap. And the key of this max heap would of course be the number of occurrences, right? So the count, right? And then we'd pop from our heap exactly K times. So why is this more efficient? Well, we know popping from the heap well, first of all, we, when we initialize our heap, we're going to add this entire set. And there, there's a function called heapify, I think, that can do that in actually linear time. So big O of n time. So that's the good thing. And of course, we know we're only going to be popping from the heap k times. Each pop is going to take log n. And we're going to be doing that k times, right? So that's going to be k times log n, right? So that's a little bit better than n log n, at least as long as k is less than n, right? But it turns out that there's actually an even better solution. There's actually a solution that can be done in O of n time, linear time. So big O of n time and big O of n memory. But we are still going to be using this exact a technique where for each value, like one, we count the number of occurrences like three. So this problem can actually be solved in linear time if you use the algorithm called bucket sort. So when you first think of bucket sort, this is probably what you're going to think of. The way bucket sort is usually taught is that for each value, for example, one, we're gonna take an input array, right? This is our input array. This, this row is the indices, the index of the array, and this is actually gonna be the value. So for example, for one, we're gonna go to the, the index one, and in the value, we're gonna put, okay, one occurs exactly once. Now we're gonna see a second one, we're gonna say one occurs twice, right? Basically, we're gonna go through the input array, count how many times each value occurs, and then in our input array, put that count for that index right map the value to the index and then put the count of that value so one occurs three times two occurs twice a hundred in this case occurs once now this algorithm would be linear time if our input values right were bounded for example if we knew for a fact that every value was between 1 and 10 then we would know that the size of our input array is also going to be 10 right but in this case the values are unbounded right like this could have been a million and then the size of our input array would have been a million even though the total input array size is only six right we have six elements but then that array where we actually store the bucket sort values is going to be unbounded right and also we want the top k elements this still isn't very clear of where exactly the top K elements are actually going to be. So in this case, th this type of bucket sort doesn't work, but there's another way we can do it. So in this case, you can see for our 
for our array where we're going to be doing the bucket sort, the index I was using the each value in the input array. For example, you know, one was being mapped to index one, right? And there we were storing the count. There's actually another tricky way that you can do it that will lead us to a linear time solution. So if we're pretty clever, this is what we're going to do. For the index, we're actually going to be mapping the counts of each value. And in the values, we're actually going to have a list of which values have exactly this particular count. For example, a hundred, right? We know that a hundred occurs one time. So what we're gonna do is for this position one, we're gonna say, okay, this value occurs only once, a hundred. A hundred occurs one single time. Which value, for another value in our input array two, we see it occurs exactly twice, right? We can count that with a hash map pretty easily. And then we'll say, okay, this value occurs twice. So in the position two, index position two of our array, we're gonna add that value two. Two is the value that occurs twice we see a last distinct value in our input array one, we count it occurs exactly three times. So in this position, index three, we're gonna say, okay, there's a value, a single value, a one that occurs three times. Now it's possible maybe we had a third three, right? Maybe th two occurs three times. In that case, we would actually have multiple values in this position, right? But in this case, we can see one occurs three times, two occurs twice, a hundred occurs once. So they're all gonna go in separate positions. And then, you know, once we've taken every single input value and then and counted how many times each value occurs and then put it in the appropriate spot in this array, what are we gonna do? Well, we're, we want the top K values, right? The values that occur, the top K values that occur most frequently, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna start at this end of the array. We want all the values that occur six times. Why are we stopping at six though? Why don't I extend this array farther, right? Seven, eight, a hundred, right? Why do the indices stop at six? Notice something about our input array. Our input array is size six, right? So that means if every single value in the input array was the exact same, the most number of times a value could occur would be exactly six times. So the cool thing about this in, about this new array that we're creating is it's bounded by six or well technically six plus one because we do have a zero but that's not actually necessary but it's basically it's proportionate to the size of the input array right so so you know when we're scanning from right to left or however we do it we're only going to be doing that we can scan through the entire thing in linear time. Now in this case, we see six, there's no values that occur six times, so we can't find our top K element in that position. We'll try the same thing with five. Five, no values occur five times. Four, no values occur four times. Three, oh, a single value. We're gonna go through every value in this array. There's only a single value in this case, but we do see a one occurs. So to our result, we want the top K values, the top K occurring values. We are gonna add a one to that. One occurs most frequently in the input array. So we add one to our result. We need one more because I think we were looking for the top two values. K in this case is gonna be two. So now we're gonna go here, which values occur twice? A single value and that value is two. So we're gonna add that to our output array. So now we've gotten the top two values and then we can return this array. Now, why is this linear time again? Because remember the max size that this array could possibly be is gonna be about equal to the size of the input array, right? Because we could have a value, for example, one could occur six times. In that case, we'd have one over here. Now, what if every single value in the input array was distinct, right? That's another extreme. What if we had one, two, three, four, five, six. In that case, this position would be empty because no values occur six times, no values occur five times, four times, three times, or two times. Every one of these six values would go in this position at index one, reason being each one of these occurs exactly once. So in that case, we'll have all six values concentrated over here. And that's still gonna be linear time because yes, we are gonna be iterating through this entire input array, which is gonna be big O of n and then we're going to add another big o of n to that right big o of n plus big o of n because we're going to have to iterate through six values in exactly one position so that's still technically linear time now we are creating this uh, array to help us and we're also going to be needing a hash map to count the occurrences of each value in the input array so the memory complexity is also going to be big o of n 
With that being said, let's jump into the linear time code. It's pretty easy once you can identify this trick. So we are gonna use a hash map to count the occurrences of each value. We're also the array, the special array that's gonna be the same size as the input array about is gonna be called frequency. Basically, you know, the index is gonna be the frequency of an element or the count of an element. And the value is just gonna be the list of values that occur that particular many number of times. So I'm gonna have an empty, I'm gonna initialize this as an empty array. The number of empty arrays that go in this is gonna be about the size of our input plus one. So now I'm, I'm just gonna go through every value in nums and just count how many times it occurs. So for count of this particular n value, we're gonna do one plus what its current count is, count.get n. Now if n doesn't already exist in our hash map or dictionary, we're just gonna put a default value of zero. So this will return zero if it doesn't exist. But this is how we're gonna be counting the number of times each value in nums occurs. Next, we're gonna be going through each value that we counted. So n c in count dot items because that's going to return the key value pair every single key value pair that we added to our dictionary and for every key value pair for every number and count i want to change the free i want to in the frequency array i want to insert so for this particular count remember the count is what's going to be the index so at index count we're going to append to that list this value n. What we're saying is this value n occurs exactly c number of times. And once we've done this, we basically initialized everything we need to. So now we're gonna have our result output, right? We want the top k elements, so four. And so we're gonna be iterating through this array frequency in descending order, right? Because we wanna start with the numbers that occur most frequently. So for i in range, length of frequency, minus one, which is the last index, and we're gonna go all the way up until zero, and we're gonna be going in descending order, so we're gonna put a negative one as the decrementer. And we're gonna go through every value, so for every, let's say, n value in frequency at this index i, because we know everything inserted in i is actually another sublist. So it could be empty or it could have some values, whatever it does, so let's say n is non-empty, then we're gonna go ahead and take that n value and append it to our result because we're basically getting the n value that occurs most frequently. Now, when are we gonna stop? At some point, our result output is going to be the exact same size as k because we're guaranteed to have at least k values in our input array. So once that happens, once if the length of result is matching exactly k, that's when we can go ahead and return result. We know this is guaranteed to execute at some point, so we don't have to put a return statement outside of the loop, and that is the entire code. So we could have solved this problem in decent time if we used a heap, it wouldn't be too bad, k log n, I think that's a doable solution, but with this kind of neat trick, we can do this in big O of n time. And I hope that you did learn something, maybe a little, about, a little bit about bucket sort. This problem definitely taught me something when I first solved it. And I know many people have been requesting problems, and I'm trying to get to all those requested problems as quickly as I can. So I hope it was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.